So for those of you who haven't met me, my name's Lisa Roby. I'm the um, Engagement and Business Director at the Australian Healthcare and Hospitals Association, and I'll be facilitating this morning's session. So, change. Who feels like they're a bit familiar with the concept of change? In fact, if you think that your, your workplace, your health services, has experienced some change, even just a little bit in the last 12 months, put up your hand. Okay, now leave your hand up if you're going to describe that change as significant. Yeah, okay. So looking around the room, change is something that we're all familiar with. So this morning we're going to have three great organisations who've transformed their services, their culture, their business processes and all sorts of other things in response to external factors. But I'd like to start the day by kicking off with just a discussion of a few of those factors. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Australian Healthcare and Hospitals Association, we're Australia's national peak body for public health care providers. Uh, we provide a national voice for public health care. We advocate for our vision of an effective, innovative and sustainable health system where all Australians have access to equi equitable access to health care of the highest standards when and where they need it. It may be a lofty ideal, but it's one we've been committed to for the last 70 years. Our members represent the whole spectrum of the Australian health system. Primary care, lots of primary health networks. Uh, the tertiary sector in Queensland, all the HHSs are members of ours. We have allied health, community health, aged. Um, we have academic institutions and private sector organisations. All of this adds up to giving us a perspective of lots of the different factors that are impacting across the health system. I'm not going to speak for a long time. Some of the stuff I'm going to cover was already discussed to some extent this morning, but I do want to outline a few of those external factors that we are seeing impact health services across the country at the moment and just set the scene a little bit for what our other presenters are going to talk about. So the first of the external factors are our shifting demographics, which has already been discussed. It's news to nobody in this room that we have an ageing population. The effect of this is really multifaceted. Um, not only are the coming years going to bring greater levels of chronic and complex conditions, for those aged over 65, 48% have at least one chronic condition. Um, we also have changing expectations of care, a little bit of what was outlined this morning. So people want to be more involved in their care decisions. They want different relationships with their care providers, a more equal relationship. And this is putting different pressures on our workforce, changing the ways they interact with their consumers. And of course, our workforce too is heavily impacted by the ageing population. In 2015, the average age, 37% of nurses and midwives were aged over 50, and the average age was 44 years for that workforce. And this is really similarly represented across our workforce. So clearly, as, though, as our workforce starts to retire, there's gonna be an impact, greater demand, lessening workforce. We need, these are serious things we need to address. Next factor implementing, and it, Clearly the topic of this morning is technology. Personal monitoring devices, hands up if you're wearing a Fitbit. Um, we've got telehealth, little bit of discussion about that this morning. We've got good old Dr. Google, which is actually getting better as time goes on and we have some quite well trusted sites now. So the use of technology by health services and by consumers is changing and evolving. Earlier this year, AAHA held a think tank looking over the horizon at where to next for the Australian health system. And when we discussed technology, it was consi consistently discussed that emergent technology is with us. It's not going away. Um, so not all technology is expensive. We had great discussions about how empowering and the changes that can be made by giving a consumer a set of scales. But of course, a lot of technology does have budgetary impacts. And while there's no doubt that effective use of technology has the potential to increase safety and quality, transition delivery closer to the patient in their home and reduce health system costs, there's lots of questions we still have to answer. 
starting with, who funds it? The big old clangor in the room. What are the privacy implications when vast amounts of data are getting collected? For example, Qantas linking to your Fitbit and giving you points for how far you walk. Interesting that you would be giving a private organisation that degree of information about your physical activity. Um, there are lots of implications on health services and health delivery for years to come. How do we train up our workforce to be more technologically savvy? Technology is going to create some fantastic new opportunities. It may also make some other current services redundant or less needed. The final thing I want to talk about and really where AAHA does a lot of its work is government policy and funding. So decisions made in Canberra or at state level can obviously have the impact to transform the sector. Um, one of our speakers today is going to talk about the impact of the NDIS, clearly a massive shift. And right now there are multiple reviews underway, private health insurance, MBS items, which can have big impacts on health services. In the last year, we've seen the introduction of the primary health networks, and in that year, their role has already evolved. They've picked up drug and alcohol services, local regional mental health reform, possibly roles in aged care and palliative care are growing. Just as they're setting up and putting in place their commissioning processes, and I, look, I don't think anyone in this room would be brave enough to say that evolution and service change has finished. I think we all assume that they're going to end up with different roles and not necessarily the operational funding that they would like to support it. Hospital funding, too, far from set. We've got agreements now in place to 2020. <clears throat> but that's only three years away, and we don't know what's going to come after it. And then with these shifts in funding at, at the macro level, we also have that intrinsic change where more funding is being given into consumers. The NDIS is demonstrating where this can bring great opportunities and positives, but also where there can be complications, unexpected outcomes. The next policy to have such a potential for significant impact is the introduction of healthcare homes. The 10 pilot sites were announced last week, but the funding is still unclear, as are the details of how they're going to work. So these changing factors are by no means the only ones impacting the health system at the moment, but they are illustrative of the forces of work and the destabilisation that some of this change can have. But change is not always negative. Change provides the opportunity for growth, for new and different services, for expansion, for changes in direction. There's a lot of good stuff that can come out of this if we look at it in the right way. And our three speakers this morning are going to discuss some of the ways that they have and their health services have transformed in response to changing factors.